Hello, Nader here. Welcome back to Path of Exile. We are looking at the Atlas of Worlds. And today we're gonna run the Colonnade, our very first tier 10. And the last of the yellow maps. Because after this, we will be connecting with tier 11s, which are red maps. And we have to corrupt the rarefied versions of those in order to get the bonus. But first, we got the Colonnade. And I open up with the atlas because I wanted to have a quick look at our options from here. From the colonnade, once we have completed this, if you start from the bazaar, then over here is going to be seven connecting maps until we get to the chimera. If from the colonnade we go right and take the courtyard, there are seven maps that connect us to the phoenix. And down here... Once we start at the Quay, it's going to be seven maps down to the Chimera. The Minotaur is all the way in the other corner, so that's going to be a bit far. But all three of these maps are actually equally distant now, which is something I didn't realize. I thought these two on the left were closer than the one on the right. So we found a colonnade and we found a courtyard. So I'm planning to run both. So basically that means the Phoenix is going to be six maps removed after that. I have yet to find the Quay despite having ran multiple coves. So for now I'm just going to follow the maps that drop. And only trade for the maps when I can't find anything else to progress with. So for now let's continue. We're going to run with and feeble on ourselves so this nice little aura that we have over here it's going to be affecting us as well so we have less accuracy less crit chance we do less damage and it's going to be hilarious because on top of that monsters also have 30 percent physical damage reduction and they gain two endurance charges every 20 seconds yes monsters are going to be really tanky and on top of that they have lightning resistance which we don't care about but they also fire three additional projectiles making them a bit more painful than normal so, let's go in and have some fun. Slowly. Small minds demand the largest structure. And I will discover very powerful monsters possessed by tormented spirits. So I like the look of this map. Reminds me a bit of the Palisade. Ooh, Memory of Wonder. That's a new one. Let's clear the area and have a little bit of a look at the memory. Oh, right. Okay, okay, we'll kill these monsters as well. We'll uh, just have to slice through with some empowerment from our flasks. And we got ourselves a courtyard, which is the adjacent map that we are... We already have one, but it's nice to get another one. I think it's now safe to have a look at the memory of wonder. This golden device is truly incredible. There's so much to take in, so many minute details to examine, any one of which could unlock the device's mysteries. Intense thought and exhaustion seem to have got the better of me, for I am ashamed to say I must have dozed off and fallen asleep in my chair. I do not normally remember my dreams, but this time they were so vibrant so realistic. One moment I was walking in a verdant field of flowers, whose aromas wafted sweetly through the warm air. The next I stood on a towering mountain peak, high above the clouds, harsh winds buffeting my back. It all melded together, yet felt so real. I don't even remember waking, but I must have done, since I clearly recall showing my daughter a map of Theopolis while still trying to shake the events of the day out of my head. Tonight, I fear, may be yet another restless night. So this one does sound familiar, but I'm not quite sure if we've already watched it on the Shadow or if it was on the Total Monster. Either way, it was fun to see something different than a memory of home or a memory of intrigue.
So it's good to see that despite us dealing quite a bit less damage, we're still killing things. No, we're not, not slicing through them like we're running through Act 1 or something. But we're still doing alright. Hello, Vorici. A moment of your time. Another day. Uh, let's see, keep the target on low life. Okay, and that's gonna be up to the north. For now, I'm still just trying to make heads or tails of the map layout. Trying to stick a bit to the to the edges here. We got 20 stacks of corrupting blood, but we're out leeching it. Uh, that was fun. I do like corrupting blood as a just a test of sheer regeneration capacity. So, oh, we're at level 86 now. Uh, I think last video we were 85. I've been uh, just running some some tier 8 and 9 maps, just looking for more new maps and just just to get some currency, uh, get some some more chisels, things like that. And one of the maps I ran was one where I had no regeneration. It was the, a shaped channel. Yeah, shaped channel. So that's uh, tier 8 now, because it's a 3 plus 5. Yeah, that makes 8. And I had no regeneration. And that was an interesting experience, because no mana, ma no mana regen means that hopping about like a deluded frog it's not the most effective thing to do because at some point you're running out of mana so you're always just looking at how much mana you have and actually walking little bits and in that map i actually it was doable but no oh, because you only have 62 mana to work with i i was constantly feeling like i was gonna run out of mana all the time so I actually disabled the Herald of Ash in order to deal with it. It reduced my damage by a little bit, but the amount of mana that you regain that way really does make you feel more comfortable. Because you, know, you hit one thing and you leech more life, more mana than you spend on the attack. We are really, really efficient when it comes to mana usage. So let's do a little bit of flasking here. But what I found very interesting as well is that the life regeneration we have, we, we have quite some. We got 360 rounded. And that, that's quite a decent amount of, of health regeneration. And with not having it, it still worked really well because we are leeching so much, we could still tank the boss. We know we could tank everything the game threw at us. It's just that the life regen, it, it, it's comfortable, but it's not strictly required, and I found that interesting. I mean, life regen is just well, one of my favorite game mechanics, but um, no, because it's one of my favorite game mechanics, it's something I pick up by default, not because I always need it. But it did make me consider that we might not need health regeneration for this build. Well, alternatively, of course, it just means that we can survive when it's not there. Oh, 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 shouldn't kill him, shouldn't kill him. Call him, get over here. Armios, don't die, don't die. Thank you. It's only that when the timer appeared that I realized, like, wait, that was the Furici target, not just a random exile. Then I think we should just ooh, piggyback, I was gonna say. So I'm gonna piggyback along the, the this this edge of the map. Just the upside of the, the balustrade. And then when we go back we take the, the wall side. I think that's gonna be mostly fine. In the comments of one of the previous episodes, it came up the, the topic of, of hexproof maps. And so far, I remember only running one. And I just simply disabled my auras and dealt with it just fine. The thing is, though, if I'm not preserving 70% of my mana in order to get two auras up, 
I could do other things with that mana. So I've taken to leveling to 50% mana reservation auras on my weapon swap. And one of them is Grace, and the other one is Hatred. So Hatred gives us about 30-35% of our physical damage as bonus as cold damage. So that's a nice counterpart to Herald of Ash in that regard. So on maps, if we are, are running a hexproof map, we can just disable the auras, uh, swap out the green gem over here for a hatred, and we get a bunch of extra damage. And the cold damage from that will allow us to occasionally freeze and chill monsters, thereby making things slightly safer for us. If, however, that map is cold resistant, or if the monsters on the map are cold resistant, which is more important than the map itself being resistant, because that wouldn't make any sense. And of course, doing a lot of extra cold damage is going to be a bit counterproductive. So in that instance, we will be running a Grace Aura, which will boost our evasion rating by quite a bit, and therefore allowing us to just evade more attacks and therefore take less damage. So, either we go aggressive, but if aggressive is counterproductive, we'll just go defensive and call it a day. It really just depends on the auras that we are running against, or the map modifiers that we are running against. Let's, see. Let's grab up all the... Okay. We're making a bit of a turn here. Let's trace the outlines again, rather than just going with the insides of the of the turn. Hello, Valtum. Goodbye, Valtum. They all have those nice charges on them let's uh, nuke them from orbit before these guys get them like that right. and we found yet another edge Ooh, there's the arena that's good means let's just clear a little bit of the area out here might be a, a map that just continues a bit almost just more than 50 mobs remaining so in that case we're gonna go in and we're gonna murder whatever is in there or have it attempt to murder us both have been likely to happen in the past ah, okay 47 you know what in that case we will actually clean up here that's good to know that the final mobs are gonna be in there Ooh, destiny leather more importantly, it has a six sockets. Um, can we wrangle this? Yeah, we should be able to wrangle this. Yes. So, a very powerful monster has been possessed by tormented spirits. That is plural. That's interesting. And is likely going to be inside of the actual boss arena. So, let's... Let's do this. <clears throat> Whatever this is. General Griffiths, maybe? I have no idea. Because this is so close to the boss fight, I'm reluctant to use flasks. Because I might need the charges. Okay. Here, bossy, bossy, bossy. Who are you? Uh, yeah, we'll get back for that bow. Hello, Tyrant. Yes, that's Gravity's. Jeez. And it, oh, okay. Single ghost, though. Jeez. He hurts. Okay. Okay, let's hide items. Oh, 
All defensive flasks. Gee. You know what? I really don't like all that uh, smoke cloud stuff going out there. Okay, this is gonna be. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. He keeps summoning minions, which is good for us. Because that will allow us to, of course, gain charges. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Hmm. Upside, at least I get to empty my pockets now. This is uh, an interesting fight. So, oh, those smoke clouds in combination with the burning ground, in combination with the enfeeble of the area, makes things interesting. The fact that he just hurts like a boat also doesn't help. And the spirit is just a fuck you shaped cherry on top. Just. Let's look at this. So, having something like a righteous fire. Uh, no, not righteous fire, but a resolute technique. The other RT. Oh. Yeah. That of course will help you uh, not miss against blinded I suppose. I'm not sure if what the interaction is there. Ooh. He's trying to see if there's a way we can draw him out without the smoke clouds. Or if he just always has those smoke clouds around him. No, 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 no. Okay, this is a, a fun, yeah, okay, let's go with, with, with fun combination of, of modifiers. So he's doing a boatload of fire damage. I am resisting it, but I'm not over resisting it. Uh, considering purity of fire, it's only going to be a couple extra percentage points. Fire flask. Rather than basalt. Maybe. Let's uh, grab a utility flask. So... Fire flask. This one is a nice stand-in for uh, that one. So we get a bit of, bit of extra maximum fire resistance here. Which hopefully helps us to... Uh, do a little bit with the sheer amount of fire damage that's coming our way. Everything else is just gonna be equal. So um, let's put the flask we were using in the Viking box and then let's do this. We have a couple more portals, we have another couple more tries. But Enfeeble, in combination with a ghost possessed map boss that has physical damage reduction and endurance charges. Oof. Fun, fun, fun. I was trying to put up the war chief and a stone golem to draw his attention because it, 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 I did notice that he, he was going after those targets rather than me. But that was just a bit too much micromanagement to be really useful. Let's try this again. So I've been trying to melee him. That's obviously been failing. Let's, let's see if we can treat this more as a as a caster battle. 
I mean, we can put a totem in this face, we have a golem that we can put in this face. And we can blow up the minions that are on the map. Because straight up fight, oh, just not a smart idea. Well, it's actually a really, really, really stupid idea. This guy is tankier than Megara from the cells, who has so far been my uh, a, bit, a bit of a nemesis. <laughs> Okay. What? Okay. Interesting. Your death is mine. That was interesting. Importing out at two thirds of his life and then summoning meteors. If you're not expecting them. I think they can hurt. Let's see, totem, golem, and just dancing, the dance of death. So, the regeneration I was talking about earlier. Battles like this is where it really does shine. Because I don't need to hit things in order to regain part of my life. I'm uh, starting to get a little doubtful about whether we can truly do this. This is a, this is a very tough fight and we only have one more try after this. Also, I'm pretty nuking my experience here. Eh? But hey, I go into most fights blind, and that is a fun way to learn about them. <coughs> well, that said, if a map really requires. Uh, if I'm doing it at <laughs> difficulty 12, so to say, <laughs> rather than trying it at a double difficulty first, then some maps are more of a challenge to do than others. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The current strategy is just trying to see if my health pool, just keeping that one topped up. And everything else is just a secondary concern. Whenever he puts a fire rain on me, I just move. them all the time. What is happening? Okay. So there's some kind of really, really strong DJing going on and there's just too many icons to at a glance see what's happening because I'm already pushing my min-max or my, my multitasking skills to, to the limit here. Final chance, no more failure. Let's do this. Or is it simply just burning? What makes sense, right? Okay. 
golem, totem, everything. So what's what's happening here? How's that burning? The downside normally I I can work off of leech, I can work off of regen. But if there's something really strong degening me and I don't have the enough flasks to work against it. Yeah, that's difficult. So I'm I'm definitely gonna rewatch to see what happened. So turns out the thing that was killing me was burning damage indeed. He cast meteors from the sky and he cast firestorm. So of course it's burning. So I've enchanted a ruby flask with dousing to remove burning to deal with that problem. And I've got myself another colonnade map with another interesting set of modifiers. I'm gonna play the map, but I'm only gonna show the boss fight part of that so i'm just going to cut over to that one so this map we will be running with temporal chains monsters have a physical damage reduction just like before monsters are hexproof and we got two bosses so it's not going to be ghost possessed but we'll get two for the price of one so that's going to be interesting enough and because of temp change we'll be, we will be attacking slower and moving slower and it's just going to be more interesting for that but because monsters are hexproof I spoke about that. There's no point in running with Blasphemy and Feeble and Temp Change. So instead, I'm putting in Hatreds. Gives us 33% uh, of our physical damage as extra cold damage. So out of the box, we're doing nearly 14,000 damage per second. And Frenzy Giants and everything else is just going to stack on top. So we're doing a boatload of physical fire and cold damage. And hopefully, hopefully, that's going to be enough. So I'll see you at the boss fight. Okay, welcome back. So Do I've there. A moment of your time. got eyes on the arena now. Just uh, wanted to show you quickly if you haven't experienced temp change maps before. They are not the most fun to run because you are slow. Upside though, our damage output is pretty insane. 21 a thousand and that's without flask bonuses if we also add the the damage flasks we're doing 28 a thousand damage per second so the temp changer seems to hinder our movement it doesn't seem to affect our attack speed in any way shape or form so it's harder to get out of the way but once we start attacking we start attacking and it hurts like a truck Twenty nine mobs remaining and those are gonna be all inside here. So let's open up a portal. And let's do this yet again. So two bosses, hexproof, fun times. Burning immune, flask charges, or the fire resistance, it all just does stack nicely. So, we got two tyrants, Joy. Thing is, okay, we got one of them cut down already to a third of his life. We need more charges to get our ruby flask up. Because... <laughs> oh, ruby charges, they're, they're useful. But you do need charges, because otherwise they don't do anything for you. So, golem. Okay, ruby flask charges used. And 
just the damage output of these two guys. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Okay, let's make ourselves fire immune while this is happening. Okay, stay out of the fire for a bit, get some more charges. Okay, we got enough to at least douse ourselves. Please draw some attention away. <laughs> yeah. So as you notice, it's still a, a very challenging map. Okay, one of them is porting out. That means we're now getting a meteor storm on top of the regular firestorms. We are gonna see these back online. Oh. And slowly regaining our charges. So it was the ghost possession that really did do us in last time. Because the damage output of a ghost possessed one really doesn't help. And there you have it. Colonnade. 16 mobs remaining, so I'd probably skip a couple somewhere. But that was a boss fight. So, lesson learned here. Fire damage, it hurts. And bringing an elemental flask along to a boss fight to counter their specific element of damage that they're doing is very useful. Now, if you've been following my series, you know I'm not the greatest at flask management. I, for a long time, I dope, I just had my bleeding flask because that's the lesson you learn from Dominus. Always have a bleeding fixing flask. Um, freezing and chilling is something that's always really useful to remove. Um, I like sulfur and I like a series promise because of the, the damage bonuses. And in this case, a ruby flask with burning fixing is pretty darn useful. It does mean, however, that currently I'm not running around with anything that takes away curses. That's the trade-off. So... There's going to be a curse, curse removal flask here by default, but I will keep a ruby flask on hand for nasty fights like this. And then oh, if I know what I'm going to be up against, I'll switch to counter specific elements. And I think that's going to be it for now. So as always, I'm going to thank you very much for watching. This was a bit of an extended episode and it was two map runs fused into one. So in the end, I could show you that the boss was defeatable. And I'm very happy once again that I'm running this on Softcore because this is a massive learning experience. And I hope you'll join me again next time when we go for more learning. Bye bye.